and welcome back! Um, we finally found the ice rod. That took a lot longer than it needed to. <sighs> Sorry, it was, a, it was an exhausting, like, 20 minutes. So, Terry, um, can you recall what we were talking about before we decided to take uh, a short break? about Harry Potter. Yeah, well, that, that was fun. Yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. You know what I want to talk about? Why the fuck there's not enough keys in this goddamn game? Holy shit. This happened last time, if you recall last year. Uh, like, end of the game, like, alright, this looks like a smooth sailing straight to the end, and the moment I say that, there's gonna be one key hiding from me. Sail. But in the meantime, I also did go ahead and, uh, max out my arrows and bombs. Uh, figured I'd do that off screen, because. That was also boring, if no one wanted to see that. Yeah. And I also made sure I got some potions to get ready for the boss battle. Now, Terry, you were telling me something interesting about you being uh, abducted by aliens last time. I mean, I don't know how interesting it was. I mean, it's, it's a fairly basic alien abduction story. Also, like a, a, a Fox Mulder kind of story, where from, the, from now on, like, despite having seen the presence of aliens, you'll still be straight-faced and just be like, mildly... Uh, enforceful that, yes, you did see aliens, and you know what you saw, you just call it. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess so. I mean, it was just one of those basic things. I was out camping. I had to take a wicked bad piss. Wicked pisser! Yeah. Wow, fuck the f... Somebody was already in the bathroom. I wandered out of the trailer, went into the woods to do my business, made sure that I was far enough away from everybody that they couldn't see and or hear what was going on. Are you a love here? You know, so it depends on what it's hitting, but definitely if it's hitting bushes or trees, there could be some noise. Yeah. And, uh, I felt a little insecure about that. I didn't want there to be noise. So, went off into the woods. I started to pee. There was a bright light. A gray thing with, with red eyes came at me and said, That looks nice. Pointed at my penis. And then left. So I guess it wasn't so much an abduction as... It was either a sarcastic remark or a genuine compliment. I, mean, I don't know. I'm gonna say the story is probably fake. No one, would, no one has ever looked at a man's penis and be like, "That looks nice." I, I, I halfway suspect that even women are like the first time they see it, they're like, "Oh God, I've got." That's what I got myself into. Is it too late to be lesbian? I just. I feel I, like it's really a choice. No, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And that what make, makes it even worse for women. <laughs> They're like, oh, God. Body, why do you do this to me? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be honest, you've never seen an alien. Uh, no proof of aliens. I don't particularly believe that we've ever been visited by aliens. But if I'm proved wrong, then I'm proved wrong. You know, I'm perfectly willing to admit if I'm wrong. Especially if it means that we get to fly around in, like, cool future cars. Even not, like, even if they, like, I don't know, that they found that, uh, body in South America or someplace that... Oh, the, possibly, the Nazca lines? Yeah, like, like could possibly be an alien. Yeah, I, I so saw that. I'm not sure how, how real that is. Yeah, I, I don't know either. I, I really didn't pay that much attention, to be honest. But if, if it ever is, if it's proved to be an alien, then I'll admit I'm wrong. One... So this guy, I always thought was kind of a cool boss. Yeah. Um, even though that this clearly has been nothing but a headache for me, the fact that like you can only kill this guy with an item you don't even find in a dungeon, you know, uh, it's a far cry from like the Twilight Princess thing where it's like, here's the Dominion Rod, have fun with it, in exactly one and a half dungeons. What? Were you supposed to hit the red head with the ice and the blue head with the? I did. It's when I, when I hit it, it flashed red. Oh, okay. Since you're constantly hitting it. These bosses are a lot easier than the gold sword. Yeah. I, why do they explode? Like, don't get me wrong, it's it's a fantastic explode effect that makes you feel good when you see it. It's not very poppy, but... It's just rock. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay, I mean, one of them does shoot fire, so maybe they're... Okay, so that one explains it, but why did Moldorm explode? Or the Helm Sword King. Like, any of these things, they just, like... They smuggle fireworks in their ass. Oh god, I'm going up! <laughs> well, I'm defeated. But at least... Oh no. Oh no! Get up! 
To be fair, I mean, like... That, 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 I did not say this would happen if I smuggled the fireworks. To be fair, I mean, like, that is a staple in all of these games where it's like, uh... Like, in, in Wind Waker, you kill enemies and they turn into a wisp of smoke. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I understand the monster's doing that, but, like, the human enemies? Like... <laughs> you know, I just want to see... they just be, like, a, a city of corpses by the end of the day, by the end of the game. <laughs> I, I fail! To... Yeah, we never still failed, didn't we? Yeah. God, it feels so long ago. It's only been like six hours. Yeah. Sparkle. But you know what I want to see, uh, and this is uh, a legitimate thing, is what if Zelda was more like a... Uh, like Splinter Cell or those games where you have to like move and hide bodies. Oh god! <laughs> it was like pushing it into the river. Okay. Now this one. The best bo body disposal that I've run into though is Mafia Two. When you're in the bayou, you can throw them into the lake, into the bayou, and they get eaten by uh, gators. It's actually kind of cool. Yeah, that, that's neat. Yeah. All right. Like, Check. Yeah. Happen. See, there's a key there. Yeah. Not fooling me this year. I spent enough time on the last dungeon, I'm not searching for three hours for that key like I did last time. I don't, did you ever watch my last playthrough, Terry? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah. Spoiler alert! I spend a long fucking time looking for that one key. The one that I just barely got. I was gonna say something. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much the, uh... What, what were we talking about before the... Oh, uh, ooh, too hard. You know what I would, would like to see? So Link's using this gold sword, right? Or Fail in our case. Fail is using this golden sword. I just want to see it slowly get bent out of shape. Like, I know it's beyond what was capable at that time, but if, if, whatever it be, I, I would like to see just this dented, busted up gold sword. Actually, just reminded me, like, uh, before I kind of lost my mind for a little bit, I actually was like talking about that fairy tale with the oh yeah the gold the golden axe like it's like it's like we, it's a told as a tale like be, why being honest is a good thing. In reality, it's also kind of pragma pragmatism. If you're a, like a woodcutter, you need to cut wood. Silver and gold are not good implements to cut wood with. No. So it's not like it's like is this your axe? Like oh, what that like very rich looking but a, uh, ultimately pointless axe? No, no, that is not my axe. Uh, I would actually need an axe that works. Oh, you mean this one? The heavy metal golden axe? No, that's even softer. That That is yeah. the opposite of what... No. I have like a normal axe like someone would actually use. For your honesty, you get to have both. Great, I guess. Cool. That's awesome. Can I have and, my axe back, please? Yeah, can I get my real, my other axe back, though, too? Because <laughs> I need to feed my family. And, like, these will do a great job of doing that. But eventually I'm going to need that back to go back to work as as a woodcutter. <laughs> just like the idea, or just like, it's like, yeah, that's that's great and everything. Can I have my normal axe back? She's like, no. <laughs> like, well, you, fa you fairy piece of shit, you give me back my axe. <laughs> you can just buy a new axe. There's my father's axe. He was a woodcutter, and his father was a woodcutter, and his father's father was a woodcutter. I will be a woodcutter to the day I die. But you're rich. I'm not rich, though. I have two axes made out of precious metals. That does not make me rich. So, you know, makes you, me you know what? There's not. It turns out, surprisingly, not a huge market in the uh, <laughs> rare metals axe business. I mean, I'm going to be able to sell this for bullion, but, you know, who knows how long that's going to take. I mean, this is this is going to be... No, it's like... This is work. We have a lot of crime in our neighborhood. You know what? You, you haven't given me a gift. Okay, I'm saving here. <laughs> I've given me a death sentence. <laughs> Because I fucked this up three times in a row last time, and I'm not playing that game again. Give me a death sentence. I can't even walk down my street with this. I think I'm supposed to blow up in that wall there. No, really, it's like, you just painted a giant target on my back. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know what? I used to sleep well at night. <laughs> well, you could use that money to move out of your neighborhood. Once again, I have to wait till I sell these axes. Gonna take a while. Where you know what? Some people are just grateful for what they have. Yeah, yeah I was grateful for what. You know, I and have. some people don't try to steal my uh, steal my property and give me two knockoffs. So, uh, <laughs> puddle, uh, like pot, me kettle. You're both black. You know what? I, I'm not. I'm not teaching them lessons. I'm not 
providing them with anything. I am just I'm just gonna go back to Fairy World and never deal with a human again. How about that? Sounds rich. That sounds fucking fantastic. Before you go, can I have my axe? No. Fetch. Throws it back in the fucking river. <laughs> just, just slowly seeks Throw it down like fuck you. <laughs> or it's like the Homer Simpson. That's my favorite part of the movie is when he's going down, he's flipping him off and he gets stuck. It does seem like that'd be your favorite part of the movie. <laughs> well, I, I, just I was disappointed by the, by the Simpsons movie, by the fact that A, they clearly had Hank Scorpio be the main villain, and not just say it was Hank Scorpio. Yeah, I really wish Was there a Scorpio. reason for that? Was someone all like, oh, well, we'd love to, but... I looked it up. I could never find a reason for it. It was just like, someone's like, no, people are gonna get angry if we call back one of the greatest one-time characters of this yeah. of the entire series. Yeah, I, I never understood that. And then, like, why was it President Schwarzenegger not... I mean, I guess that kind of restricts what they can do with, uh... Rainier Wolfcastle? Rainier Wolfcastle. Oh, so much of that movie was not canon. Like, like it, I don't they think... They referred it was... to it in the season premiere of the next season. I know, but, like... The fact that, like, the entire U.S. kind of hated Springfield for a while, and now it's like, no one even talks about, like, hey, remember the time when the U.S. government tried to kill us? Well, it's talked about, like I said, it was talked about in the next season. But it's not like the Simpsons talk about old episodes a lot, either. Except for Homer jumping over the, um, jumping over the Springfield Gorge. That's really the only thing they talk a lot about. Well, in uh, Principal Tamsarian. Once. That was that was still a nice callback though. I like that. It's like that seems like a that seems like a cop out just to make things go back the way they were. Oh, you're probably right, Principal Tamzarian. I'm moving along. Snowball too. That's still a bad episode. Oh no, I Well though that's the weird thing too, is like we've talked about this to yeah. death because we're both huge uh, Simpsons fans. Is that really all things considered, the principal and the pauper by itself isn't a bad episode. No. What it meant for the series was definitely yeah. bad. And uh, what, I wish I knew the name of the guy. It was a YouTube video that I watched and I shared with you. We actually talked about the death of the Simpsons and why... Oh, by the way, thank you for that, because like, the seasons that I've watched, like, episodes that I watch that are in later seasons, like, I enjoyed some episodes even to the 15th season. There was a couple episodes I still enjoyed. Watching it, I think back to that video, and I think, eh, and I'm like, yeah, this this really doesn't feel like counterculture anymore. This is just culture. Yeah, and that, that was the uh, the argument that the video we watched made. That was that The Simpsons came out as kind of like this uh, sitcom counterculture in an era where you had, like, uh, you had the Ar like Archie Bunker, and you had... Uh, you came out of, like, Honeymooners, and yeah. you had Full House, like, this the sitcom laugh track kind of thing. The Honeymooners was long Oh, I know, that. I'm just... Uh, okay, so, I was, so was I Love Lucy. I'm just... Yeah. These are just random sitcoms that pop into my head, and they kind of exemplify the point, though, is yeah. that this was this was comedy. This was the yeah. sitcom. This, like, no matter how much we tried to stray from Beaver Cleaver, it was always Leave It to Beaver, we just yeah. a different skin. Yeah. And so The Simpsons kind of came out of that, like, wouldn't it be funny if, like, yeah, so there's this uh, all-wholesome family family sitcom, except that the family it surrounds and the world around it was more cynical and more yeah. realistic, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of what The Simpsons was. And after a while, though, is that started being the mainstream. You had shows yeah. like South Park and Family Guy start doing what The Simpsons was doing. Yeah. And that was... You know that that was the show. Uh, that, was, that was how TV shows worked anymore. It wasn't the Flintstones setting the standards. It was the Simpsons, and yeah. so the Simpsons became uh, sort of falling behind because they were the sitcom everyone was parodizing. Yeah. Um, and ultimately they they started ma basically making sitcom esque jokes instead of having their own unique sense of humor and unique take on things. Yeah. And that's what I try to look at in some things, is I'm like, okay, is this unique? Is this something that The Simpsons could do? There are sometimes yes, sometimes no. But it definitely becomes... It starts to become more and more often. Yes, no. somebody else could have done this. Yeah. Um, that video uh, quotes a blog that uh, also ex best exemplified the issue, and, he ta and they talked about, uh, you know, like, 
the difference between like a classic Simpsons joke and a more modern Simpsons joke. Did you send it to me on Facebook Messenger? Because it's not fair for us to talk about this. I and did. Not give this yeah, look, day. look that up. It's 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 in Facebook Messenger. It's, it's actually probably like the second to last message I sent you. Yeah, we don't talk. Anymore. Which is kind of frustrating because I hate talking in text now that I have access to Facebook Messenger. Yeah. It's just so much more convenient and my phone doesn't blow up a billion times. Yeah. I found out that I can actually respond through Facebook Messenger through my watch. Like, I can type in a message on my watch and my uh, text message program won't let me do that. Let's see, Super Eyepatch Wolf. The company. Is on a, it is on the channel for Super Eye Patch Wolf. Well, it is called The Fall of the Simpsons: How It Happened. Terry, I'll I'll, I'll put a link in the description somewhere. Yeah, put a link. But I'm just like putting it out there so people know. Yeah, you're right though. It's like we can't talk about it without at least giving the guy credit. With, like instead of just quoting verbatim his entire video. Yeah. I, Super Eye Patch Wolf, fantastic job. You kind of basically you really changed my look at the Simpsons. Like good for you. Yeah. Because nobody else had done that, and you might have ruined several seasons of The Simpsons for me. So That's okay. Good or bad for you, I don't know about it. You take that as you will. Red mail! Key! I just need a big key, and I'm good for the rest of the fucking dungeon. Um, but yeah, so his ultimate thing was uh, the, the difference between the jokes, and, uh, yeah. you know, like the old Simpsons joke Homer is waiting at an, uh, a terminal at an airport. And, uh, the intercom comes on, it's like, now, board, now boarding first class passengers, second ca class passengers, and fat passengers, right? And Homer just sits there, like, oblivious and happily unaware, twiddling his thumbs, until a stewardess comes up, like, clears her throat and points to the fat line. And Homer looks at them, looks down at himself, and goes, oh, and gets up and joins the line. Whereas, the, uh, the new Simpsons joke... Like, that was an old Simpsons joke. Yeah. New Simpsons joke would be now boarding first class passengers, second class passengers, and fat passengers. And Homer goes, that's me, and walks straight straight to the line. Yeah. You know? Uh, one is clearly, like, th there's no clear punchline for the first one, but it's still yeah. funny and works on a bunch of different levels. Yeah. Like, the first level being, uh, you know, the the fact that they that there's this first class First, like first class passengers, second class passengers, and fat passengers. Like they have their own classification. Yeah. Two is that Homer is just so innocent of his own shortcomings that he doesn't realize that he's fat. Yeah. Despite all evidence and times that he himself has admitted that he's fat. Yeah. And then of course the fact that they're so strict on like enforcing it that a stewardess has to come over and make sure he knows he's supposed to be boarding right now yeah. instead of just letting it slide. So, mo so. Here's something I want to talk about. Okay. The Simpsons are doing season 29, as we speak. Season 29 is probably getting... is probably half done. Okay. Maybe, depending on how many months ahead they are, I would say. Season 30, most of the rumors say... This is the final season? Yeah, season 30 is the final season. So next year, final season, that's it. What, what would you want? Besides the ending. No, I'm not talking about the ending. I'm talking... For the season, because what I've always wanted to see, personally, I would love to see just like a greatest hits of writers come back. Like all of their writers who wrote these great episodes are ideas that they never got to capitalize on, stuff like that. Like even if it's callbacks to episodes that were 20 years before, I still say do it because it's like at this point let's just celebrate what's what happened, you know, what's here. That's my thing. Like I don't like I, the ending. Like you've told me what you what you want the ending to be. And I, that was uh, yeah. what was it Schwartzwalder who first came up with that that concept where like The Simpsons takes place in an infinite time loop. Uh, I don't remember. It was one of the it was one of the writing staff. I think yeah. they've left since then. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it might, it might have been John Schwartzwalder. But yeah, so anyone who's like three people that are still left on the main thing is like there's Richard Sakai who's been the producer since the beginning. Oh no, this the, the writer who pit, who who threw this out there. Uh, it might have been, uh, you know, Al James. It, no, it wasn't even a writer. I think uh, it was uh, uh, James L. Brooks. Oh, hey. Um, it was actually one of the producers. Now that I think about it, but the he he threw out in a tweet that his his idea for the end of the series was that the Simpsons exists in an infinite time loop. So the last scene of the last episode would be the Simpsons going to the Christmas talent show 
that the series first opened up on. And honestly, that the reason why I want that so bad is the fact that I'm still really angry and butthurt that they did a 90s retrospective episode. <laughs> Despite the fact that the show started in night in '89, like we've been there in the '90s, there wasn't this like hidden chapter of The Simpsons that we didn't watch. We yeah. were fucking there. Well, okay, there is one thing that I actually kind of that's ridiculous but makes me laugh at the same time, is that Homer specifically states in the uh, in the B Sharps episode that their barbershop quartet was. The music that took place between hair metal and grunge. Uh-huh. Like, there was this weird little gap, and they fit in there for a summer. That's it. Uh-huh. That was their time. But now, Homer, in the 90s episode, starts the grunge movement. Or is at least a big part of the grunge movement. So Homer is two eras of music in the Simpsons world. And it's never brought up. No, I think it's because at that point they're just like trying to see what they could get away with without people yeah. noticing or causing a stink. And God damn it, I notice and I cause a stink. Well, on one hand, I liked the episode because I'm like, eh, at least they're admitting they don't have a timeline anymore. Because well, they're, they're, Homer and Marge were supposed to be born in the like, 50s. Originally. Yeah. And then it was like, we went to high school in the 70s. And now it's like, so we went to high school in the 70s and went to college in the 90s. We <laughs> skipped a decade. Which, not, you know, people did. But they were, you know, <laughs> there was a two-year, there was a two-year gap that was a decade. To be fair, if you're gonna skip, if you're gonna skip a decade, the '90s was the one to skip. They skipped the '80s. Oh, god damn, they fucked up. <laughs> no, but it, it, it was one of those things where it's like I would forgive that time fuckery if it turned out that yeah, no, they they're living in an infinite loop. The same yeah. celebrities are are like simultaneously like alive and dead. They live on a Mobius strip of mortality. Like just the just the concept of what you what you'd be able to do with that as a concept would be so fun that I, I would that's the only way I'd be really happy with how they would end the series is if they did I'll that. I'm okay with a lot of how they end the series. I do not want a flash forward episode. Like you know, I just don't want a flash forward episode. I'm gonna say I don't want a future episode. They've done one future episode that I think is good, and that's Lisa's way. Uh, and of course the itchy and scratchy. Oh, Itchy and Scratch. Which yeah. doesn't really count as a fa- Flash Forward episode, but there was a Flash Forward sequence. Yeah. See, which is the, the baseline from what all of the things that the writing staff has always been able to say, like, no matter how bad we make Bart, there's all, like, he always redeems himself because at the end, the, the latest they put it out, he's uh, the Supreme Court Justice. Yeah. He's... The thing about Bart is always that Bart is mischievous. He's not evil, he's not demonic, he's not the this unholy terror. He has poor impulse control and is yeah. a child, is yeah. essentially what it comes down to. Yeah, and he's he's not smart, but he's clever. He's and some and kind of driven in a weird way. Like, there are things that he would be good at. And that's always what I liked about the Lisa's wedding episode, is that Bart was was a successful uh, construction worker. He was a demolition man, uh, working in a, um, a wrecking ball. He enjoyed it. He was happy. It was a good life. I was fine with that. But in the Lisa's President episode, he's just a lazy stoner who writes, who steals music. He's Polly Shore. Yeah. And the other two fast forward episodes. The high school one isn't terrible, except for the, um, well, I think it was not great as it is, but the thing that's really a problem with Oh my it, god. <sighs> okay, I still had a fairy. Yeah. I, like, I thought I just dropped the one fairy that I had, because I thought I had the hook shot. Well, I guess that kind of works out then. I've got, I fucking hate this, I've got to figure out how to get... So, at the very least, in that episode... Bart does the right thing, helps Lisa out, she goes to college, and things could still turn out okay for Bart. They could. Not for Maggie, though. <laughs> yeah. But then, we flash forward in that episode, Bart still marries the girl that didn't understand him. Lisa, which probably the most disappointing part, becomes Marge, marries Millhouse, her daughter doesn't respect her, and she just wants to be a part of her daughter's life. She becomes Marge. Like, literally, they had an episode 
about that, where it's like, that's what Lisa didn't want, and it hurt Marge's feelings. And they did it anyway, and they made it, and and Bart's living in his old classroom, in his old uh, fourth grade classroom, because it's been turned into cheap apartments. It's just, it's depressing. You taunt me, Box. You taunt me, and you hurt me. So yeah, don't do any future episodes. You've done, at best, two good ones. Please, just don't. Like, unless it's what I already said, that it's redeeming for all of these characters, then it's fine. But otherwise, please don't do it. I just, I, I, I wouldn't even want that, because then it would feel like you're pander like we're being pandered to. Where it's like, yeah. don't worry, everything turns out A-OK -okay for the Simpson family, which would kind of be the exact opposite of how the Simpsons family is. Yeah. You know? The Simpson family, granted, it's not as bad as some, as some series, but it's like, they're not winners. That's kind of the ongoing joke and struggle, is that, yeah, they're not winners, but they're okay with that because they still love each other, ultimately. Yeah. There's one Lisa. That's it. Uh-huh. And maybe Maggie. Let's try this guy again. So I'm missing the big key. And we're getting close to the end of this episode. I'm afraid we're going to have to, like, find the big key off screen again. But it's just, I've, I've exhausted all my possibilities, I think. I've got through here, I've got to the next room. And without the big key, I can't move on. And that's the one thing that we're missing right now. So I say we cut for about 5-10 minutes. And, uh, come back, hopefully we'll have the key. If not, then you'll be seeing the end of us getting the key. So, I'm Terry, this is Eric, this is Every Game Ever, and we'll see you next time.